We're the Hairy Bikers. Our mission in life? To cook great tasting food that all of us can relish. We're fit and bronzed with a full tuck. Well, a bit too full, actually. We've been made to confront an unpalatable truth. You look fat, both of you. Who do? You two. It's the love of the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> but it's not just our nearest and dearest. Doctors have spoken. It's medical fact. 42% of your body mass is fat. You're really on the way to being quite considerably obese. It's like wearing one of those, what do you call them? A gilet full of lard. Sumo suits. So in this series, we've given ourselves just over three months to slim down. And we're not going it alone. Joining us are a group of like-minded foodies who also want to lose weight. I'm down to the last usable notch of my belt. <laughs> yeah. I am that heavy now that my boobs overbalances. We're sharing recipes and, most importantly, supporting each other. Smells like lasagna. Does it look like it? Yes! Yeah. Get on! Let's eat this for the next three days and we'll be fuzzy. Don't worry, mate. The best is yet to come. <laughs> this is our latest culinary adventure. The reinvention of food we love, making it small on calories, but keeping it big on flavour. But it's not diet food. It's just it's food. great food. Dish is so good, we can look forward to every meal time. Oh, the breakfast sensation. And to a leaner, lighter us. I feel more, more virile, more potent, don't you? Oh, um, man. Along the way, we're examining when our battles with the bulge began. A teacher came in. Mm -hmm. He said, Simon King mustn't eat anything because he's on a diet. And I just wanted to die. I just wanted to die. I'll never forget it. I think it went wrong when I went to college. I discovered curry and beer, because I was never a fat kid. So in this series, we're embarking on a life-changing drive to cook more cleverly, and our families are right behind us. If I can't get into these jeans comfortably in the next three months, I'll give you Five hundred pounds. Oh my God! Okay. If I'm dead honest, I think it's just to take me top off without having to think that I'm a lordy. For us, our favourite meals are the ones that we cook at home. So this then's our challenge: to reinvent family meals from big weekend breakfasts, Sunday lunches to hearty suppers, so we can stay in love with food yet still lose weight. That is a multi-layered, multi-flavoured plate of food. Fabulous. We live to eat, but we've discovered we've been putting away more than the two and a half thousand calories a day recommended for the regular bloke. On average, you had about three and a half thousand calories a day. Shine a light. And we've paid a heavy price on the scales. What are you, mate? 19 to 1, 5. Oh, oh, oh! What's the fat lad? What is he? He's 17, 11, 5. Never. So our target's to lose around two and a half stone each. To do it, we're more than halving what we eat and aiming for 1,300 calories or less a day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to be cunning in the way that we cook to create slimming family meals we can relish. Look at that, man. That's fab. Love it. It's not just ways to get our taste buds going, we're also starting to think about ways to get our hearts pumping and our bodies fit. And the answer's really quite simple. Do a bit more, put less in your mouth. It's not yeah. rocket science, is it? It's so, common sense. Well, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. We've been doing this for just over a week now and we're already starting to see results. I was 113 kilos when I got weighed at the hospital. I'm 110 now, so that means I've lost half the stone. Well, if I lose that without trying, bring on the month. Yes! Now, the thing is that I have a phobia about scales. Just step on them, Kenny. Step on them, it'll be fine. Which I have a feeling that most blokies will. Step on the scales. Right. Two or three times, it's like buying motorcycles. It becomes easy. You lost three pounds. Not brilliant. I've lost three pounds. I was hoping I'd lose a bit more because apparently the weight comes off quick when you 
Let's first start off. Yeah. That's the thing about Sai, I think it always thinks he's not quite doing well enough. You have to have to give positive encouragement at all times. Because he just doesn't see it. He just doesn't see it in himself at all. My dad t does tend to wish for a bit of support, but when he needs it, he knows that I'm here because I'm like, I'll always, I won't see, ever see anything negative. It'll always be positive, like cheering him on, you know what I mean? Back at my place, it's out with the bad and in with the good. I think I'm doing all right, but the temptation's all around me and you're not helping. I'm removing anything from my fridge that will lead me astray, but my wife Lily and stepdaughter Isa don't seem impressed. Come on, babe, Brie. Mozzarella. Do we live on cheese? And I can't have cheese. And I love cheese. Look at that. 500 calories in a packet. Oh. The reality is that when Dave's hungry, he gets, uh, he gets a little bit stroppy. You always keep your chocolates in the fridge. It's got to go. It's got to stop. And Lil, you make me cook Flanders saint jean de Minervois. There was 13 eggs in that and a jar of honey. Look at him. Look what he does to the fridge. Mussels in garlic butter, convenience food. Garlic butter. Oh, there's temptation everywhere. And Isa, look, it's like a library of ice cream. I just don't know why we've got so much junk in our fridge. You do the shopping. Exactly. He loses interest pretty quickly, so I thought he was going to lose interest in the diet, but he hasn't really. Oh, it's got to go. It's annoying. Oh. <laughs> Mr Myers and I aren't the only ones who have been packing on the pounds. Us lardies are now in the majority, with over 60% of Brits overweight or obese. And we've discovered the most effective way to lose weight is with the support of a group. So we've created our own, the Big Eaters. They all love their food and want recipe ideas to help them lose weight. In return, They'll share their tips with us too. Big Eaters writer in residence, 60 year old Ken Ray from South Shields, is the first to contribute a cookery idea for a breakfast. So we've come to his place to try it out. Right, chaps, come this way. Straight down here. How are we getting on? I'm doing fine, thanks. Really good. good. Are you? Yeah, yeah, smashing, yeah. man, thank you. Nice, nice flat, dude. Yeah, wait and see this. All right, so we've got black breeze, straw breeze, dry breeze, dry fried, dry f oh, gently intensifies the flavour. Uh -huh. Brings out the natural sugar, so you don't need any sugar or sweetener on them. Oh. Right. So, do you want to try one right. to see if it's? I'd give it a bit longer. A bit longer to caramelise. Yeah. Yeah. A little sprinkling of mixed spice. Smell that. That's, that's yeah. Wonderful, that. Shake the pan instead of using the thingy, so it keeps the keeps the. Yep. That's it. All right. That's it. That's it. You see? got the flip. That's it. You don't oh, need to do it hey. any harder than that. Look I'm at that. I'm learning stuff all the time with you two. It's good. I look at that. Man. Shaking and flipping. Oh, that's oh. it. Shaking that pan, boss. Lovely. All right. I think that's nearly ready. Lovely. Let's give these crumpets. Bits, uh, crumpets. Yeah. Mm. Let's have a look. They're ready now. Okay, can we have two? Can we have two? Two, two yeah. Very low, low calorie stuff. Crumpets, to me, they're always comforting real food. Yeah, absolutely. And all those lovely, you can, you can smell the natural sugars being heated. There's a caramel to it as well, isn't there? Mmm. Mm. Nice. There's no butter on the crumpets, unfortunately, but you get this 0% fat Greek yogurt. Right. Oh. It's Greek, it's really good. And then Greek honey. Right. Just a little squidge. I must say, that looks lovely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, should we try it? Cheers. Thanks, yeah, I've got the weapons. OK, here we go. Lead on, Macduff. Lovely. Hey, look at this. It's like a mother's union meeting, isn't it? Well, bon appetit. Right. I like the, the idea with the spice. Mmm. Hey, it's brilliant, that. Mmm. Mmm. That's a belter. Mm. It is. It would be a really good Sunday morning breakfast, this. Yeah, yeah it would. About 10 o'clock, all the papers, big thing of coffee, cafeteria coffee. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Good work, Mr Ray. We've calculated there's just 257 calories in that dish. We like to breakfast like a king, and we find if we skip it, we're ravenous mid-morning, and that's when we hit the demon snacks. 
But there's one fat pack breakfast we'd love to fathom, a right royal fry-up. My dad's probably craving full English because that's what he loves, his breakfast. Absolutely loves it. Sausage sandwiches and baker sandwiches. That's, like, his favourite thing to eat. <laughs> to find out if there's any way we can have a fry-up, we're heading back to Newcastle University and Hospital to pick the brains of our new dietitian friend, Professor Ashley Adamson. She's a cruel woman, Ashley, and has arranged to meet us in the sausage-scented student canteen. It's like a hall of temptation. We're finding it difficult. We can't just go into a cafe and say indulge in a great British breakfast anymore. What's so wrong with it? Your average cooked breakfast, if you've got fried bre bread and sausages and so forth, it's probably around eight, 900 calories. That's, that's quite a big start yeah. of the day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you went out for a walk yeah. and you wanted to burn off your 800 calories, you would have to walk at two and a half miles an hour for just short of two and a half hours to burn off your breakfast. What? Of 800 calories. Right. Gross. The thing about breakfast, to have a breakfast is, is really Im important. Right. Oh, I love my breakfast. Um, yeah, I know you do, you love it. Okay, so let's think about your cooked breakfast. Think, okay, where's the fat in here? Get rid of the sausages, the black pudding, the fried bread. You can have some baked beans. You can have baked beans on toast. Are baked beans full of sugar, though? No. No, your baked beans, are, in terms of, they're going to make you feel a bit full. They're very low fat. OK, right. so you've, you've not got as much have anything like the number of calories in there. What about a poached egg? You could have a poached egg. Poached egg on, on some bread, that would be, that'd be fine too. so attractive. Um, what, what are you doing? That leftover sausage that's casually cast aside like an old sock looks so tasty and satisfying. Sit still. Don't do it. Overcome. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't steal food off a student's plate. Yes, you would. <laughs> that desperate. Yeah, they're lush. <laughs> Come on, let's put Ashley's theories into practice before you eat something you regret. I feel spiritually enlightened by Ashley Sai and inspired to reinvent the cooked breakfast. <whistles> we can make a cooked breakfast without the aid of fat. <whistles> we can achieve satisfaction. We do not need salt on eggs anymore. These Tibetan bells, you know, I got them for tranquility. They're not drunk, well, they're bloody irritating. A cooked breakfast will calm my nerves. And there's one ingredient that's a must. Bacon. Can't give up bacon, can we? What kind of food? It's the fruit of the pig. But bacon, it's dead fatty. So how about we try a lean cut like back bacon and give it an extra trim? Gonna cut the fat off. You can feed it to the birds. Cos you kind of give it up, can you? I mean, you know, on a Saturday morning, you get up, you know, you fancy a bit of something, don't you? It's sex. It's true. And you think as you burn calories, it's great. I feel more, more virile, more potent, don't you? I do. I'm, um... <laughs> Moving swiftly on, we're picking up tips all the time and we know there's around 40 calories per teaspoon of oil. So how about this as a way to use it sparingly? So I'm just going to pick the pan. We're using sunflower oil, because obviously it's got a high burning temperature, so it's good for frying. See, it's that sizzle in the morning. You don't have to give it up. No, no. And poached eggs aren't off the menu either, and we're experts at getting them spot on. Take your stomach rumbling, then. <laughs> Place the eggs in boiling water for precisely 20 seconds. Go. No more, no less. And this will cause the white just to kind of solidify a little bit so you won't have a pan full of Doctor Who monsters. 20 seconds. And the eggs come out. White wine vinegar. I always slosh in a good glug to help the eggs bind together. Enough, Mr King, do you think? Perfect, mate. And just float that egg into the water. Look at that, see? There you go. There is a lovely comforting feeling frying bacon. Yes, you get a full plate of food with a fry-up, so what can we add to bring fat-free flavour, yet freshness? Tomatoes, mother, please. Right. Let's dry-fry cherry tomatoes with the bacon. That'll bring out their natural sweetness. I still get the ritual of cooking with what we're doing, and actually what we're doing is still a very tasty dish. It is. 
So instead of toast, we've got watercress. Watercress is great because it's savoury and peppery. Not only that, there's only 20 or so calories in a whole bag. That's good. There can be over 90 in a slice of white toast. What's getting me going, King, is it's looking like a good place of food. Lovely. Well, that's a poached egg. That is. It's just that right level, whereas when you cut into it, it's going to ooze on your bacon. Ooh, oh, the breakfast sensation. Perfect. How about we drizzle on some balsamic vinegar? Combined with the cherry tomatoes, it'll add a ketchup hit. Mm. Good, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. That's a satisfying plate of food, and we've checked it's around 264 calories, leaving us about 1,000 for the rest of the day. Mm. Fancy a little coffee? Mm. Black, please. We've cracked a post-industrial breakfast for modern men like us, Dave. It's not the way my dad ate. He needed to eat on an industrial scale for work, and I doubt his waist was ever more than 37 inches. Yours is nearer 50, mate. We live in a different world, Si. Take my home barrowing furnace. It's a beautiful Victorian town, but when I grew up, it was all hammers and spanners and thriving industry. My God, times have changed, mucker, haven't they? Oh, yes. I mean, this was the paper mill where my dad worked for nearly 50 years. Yeah. And he was never a, a fat man, you know, but I suppose his daily work, it was quite physical, but his whole day was on his feet. He was wandering around lifting things, and that's how things have changed. There still is heavy industry in Barrow today, but until the 70s, this whole area was a bustle of factories and docks. It was the most amazing scene when the shipyard buzzer went for lunch. And there would be maybe three or four thousand men on bicycles yeah. coming out of the, the shipyard. Yeah. So they'd maybe cycle two or three miles to go home for their lunch, which was the main meal of the day. Yeah. And then you cycle after that back to work. It was physical graft. Um, yes. Places like this are just derelict now. Yeah. And, you know, the ones that are thriving, you push a button. What happens? You eat more, you get fatter because you're not working as hard. Yeah, I suppose the thing is, he's come to a point where your lifestyle's not sustainable. Exactly. And if you don't do something about it, you're going to end up like this place, derelict. I think we've just pulled it back in time. The gable end was away, but now we're <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not ready for being condemned just yet. No. I want to be as energetic and fit as my dad always was, but you don't get fit just sat on a motorbike. No, mate, you're not wrong. I hate to admit it, Dave. The writing's on the wall. We need to get fit. Kingy, we're in this together. Exercising with a mate is supposed to be really motivating. I know it costs a lot, but how about we get a personal trainer? No, mate, I'm not one for getting sweaty in a gym. Too late. I've already booked us a session, but we're doing it al fresco. A bit like a picnic, but without the food. So how long is it since you've done any real exercise? Like, slapping the fat? Yeah. About 18 months. OK. 1966. <laughs> I made an effort to get out, and then after that, I just let it all go to rot. OK, then. Lovely. Right. Right. Well, do you want a so, I think we need to have a... get a little bit warmed up. OK? That yeah. sound all right? Let's just start walking, all right? So just... Nice and relaxed. <sighs> start moving the arms. That's what we want to do. Not getting these arms If moving. you ever see a bums and tums, I will kill you. <laughs> It's been suggested that Zumba would be fantastic I for you I am not guys. doing Zumba! <laughs> or spinning. No, or spinning. That's, a, oh, that's no. No, that's the product, the same, <laughs> that spinning thing. <laughs> what are you doing? You're like a clockwork mouse. What are you doing? Let's <laughs> do what Karen said. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> OK, then. Right. We're going to do some stretches, just very light, basic stretches. And lift it up. Nice stretch right through. Oh, that's lovely, <laughs> that. It does good things for you. I just flee this <sighs> Oh, I've got right a stitch. Then, I'm going to try that stitch. I can't have a stitch already. Try and get them knees together. Look at that. Steady as a rock. There you go. Ooh. Excellent. OK, then. Karen wants to put us through our paces, and she started with flexibility tests. OK. Go on, mate, you first. Oh. This is sad. Right, so... <laughs> go on, go for 15. Go you're, for pushing, 15. you're putting us off. I'm not. I'm trying to be enthusiastic, <laughs> like, like Jane Fonda does. <laughs> Come on, Kingy. 
Come on, my son. There you go. Oh, 14. Look at that. Never has so much fuss been made of pushing a piece of cardboard with me fingertips. Smooth. I'll be no good at this. My belly will get in the way. That's fine. Everybody's an individual. How do you feel? <sighs> Slightly light-headed no, or anything? You're fine. Karen. OK, no, then. Fine. All right, then. Next up. Three, two, one, go. Ah, push-ups. You can kiss my cannons, Kingy. Yeah, they don't look like cannons from where I'm standing, mate, I tell you. Oh, your headband's coming off. Go on, mate, go on. I, I can feel it in my guns. I, on the other hand, want a magic bullet. A PE class in the park is not for me. How do you feel after that, guys? I realise it's necessary, and I know for me it works. Everything with moderation. Moderation. It's no quick fix. No quick fix. No quick fix. No fatty diet. No fatty diet. It's Shut a up, lifestyle. you. You're like you're lifestyle. a politician. <laughs> Dream you. It's complete bloody indoctrination <laughs> straight from the off. Ooh, that was great, Kingy. I feel energised. I needed that kickstart to spur me on. Ah, uh, it's not for me. I need to find a form of exercise I'm comfortable with to keep me motivated. Anyway, we've been told exercise alone isn't enough. The answer is in the kitchen. So how about we throw our energy into re-engineering the most important family meal? At the end of the week, we always have, like, a Sunday roast. We get round the table together and that's the way we communicate and that's the way we're celebrating everything. It's really nice, I really like it. It's my favourite part of the week, definitely. <laughs> I love roast chicken, but there could be well over a 1,000 calories with all the trimmings. <laughs> well, especially the way I do it. Big roast potatoes floating in goose fat. Yorkshire puddings and... Uh, cauliflower and cheese, everything, <laughs> everything that you can think of. See, Kingy, what do you do when you're on a diet and you want that family meal? Why don't we just grab a chicken and make it even leaner by removing the skin and fat? But, Si, that's what gives the lovely flavour and bite. But, dude, that's the challenge. It won't be a roast if it's not packed with flavour. Let's try and create a second skin. I know, Kingy, how about a masala spice mix? No tricks, no chemicals. Start off with half a dozen or so cardamom pods. The flavour is in the bit in the middle that looks like mice droppings. And with coriander seeds, cumin, peppercorns and cloves. Just use four cloves and be careful, use too many, it'll taste like a visit to the dentist. Oh, I hate that. Now, these spices have to be roasted. This releases all the aromatic oils and the flavours that are buried deep within them. And you can just tell from the aroma, this'll be tasty. They smell nice and nutty. Oh, they do, actually. Now to add in powdered spices. Turmeric, chilli powder, fenugreek and paprika. Well, look at this, it's all those spices that we love. You can do the alchemy. Y you don't have to forget your witchcraft just because you're hungry. No, you don't. And this is when the workout really starts. And the kitchen starts to fill with aroma that sets your juices going. It is lovely. Like a satsuma on a griddle. Smell that. Oh, fabulous. Oh, it's bouncing, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. If you wanted to create a tikka masala sauce, you'd add ghee and cream. But we've a plan to make it lighter. Some low-fat yoghurt. Now, whether you're dieting or not, that, my friends, is a proper... Masala paste. How's your chicken, Kingy? That is done, naked. That is, isn't it? Look at this, Dave. This is, in essence, fat. Fat. That is, isn't it? That's all that is. Look at that. Skin, fat and sinew. Oh. Nice job. Thank you. Plug it on. Take your hands. Massage. Oh, yeah. This is going to form like a second skin, yeah. a complete bark on that chicken. But it's a skin that's tasty, it's fabulous, and it won't make you creel over with heart disease. Just put a bit of cling film on that, mate. Yeah. Whilst we leave our coat of many spices to do its magic, the Big Eaters resident martial arts instructor, John Saunders, is going to have a go at our sneaky leek lasagna recipe from last time, where we use leeks instead of pasta. He's got a double challenge on his dangerous hands. Not only is this his first attempt at a low-calorie recipe... First cooked meal. First time I've ever prepared any food, so how it will turn out, I do not know. 
Ah, it seems Black Belt John's a bit green when it comes to cooking. I hope nobody gets hurt. I've, I've managed to do me pasta leaves, so I'm quite chuffed about that. Look at them babies. That's my pasta. I can't believe I've done that. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> Here you go. This is what it looks like before it's been cut. I'm quite, I'm quite proud of it. Look at that baby. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Ow! 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 Ooh. Wow. Oh my goodness, Johnny. The boy did good. John. <laughs> Look at that. Well done, John. That looks a stunner. I hope he doesn't think it's a meal for one, though. Oh. For Big Eater Liz, it's the morning after the night before. Me and the girls went out last night and we've just got up. We were really inspired by Liz when we first met her. She's lost over 12 stone in the last three years and has another two and a half stone to go. I've changed so much as a person, not just in the way I look. I'm a different character. I've still got all the nice parts and all the, the fun parts of the person I was before. Um, I don't feel the need to impress everybody now. The new confident Liz is more popular than ever, but this morning she's paying for her socialising. Let's hope our healthy fry-up gets her back on the weight loss wagon. So, this is our hangover breakfast. A lovely, um, healthy bite to eat to sort our hangover out today. Um, yeah, looks good. Thanks, Thanks Andy. Andy. You're very welcome, ladies. And later on, we'll find out if Liz and John's efforts have paid off on the scales. Time for Si and I to finish off our alternative roast dinner. Let's see if the spicy second skin has done its magic. Well, he's looking happy, isn't he? Look at him. Looks like he's been on for a night out. <gasps> By removing all the skin and fat, we reckon we've saved about 300 calories per serving. Can I have roasties, then? Yes, you can, mate, but just a couple of spuds each. We've learned gram for gram, oil and fat contain the same calories, so let's be measured in our use. I've got an idea, Si. We're going to infuse this all with spices, so we're getting maximum effect. Funny sort of way, Kingy, I think we're going to become better cooks after doing this, because we're getting more out of the flavours, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. Right, mate, Lush, cut these into little wedges. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that colour. Love it. Yes. Once the veg are well coated, it's ready for roasting. Hey, Dave, let's give the chicken an extra fruity twist with some lime juice. To the fiery furnace! Now, because potatoes are full of starch, which equals calories, we're roasting lower-calorie veg to bulk them out. Now, this is good Mediterranean veg, full of vitamin C and goodness. Look okay, at that, man. Mm, lovely. Look at the colours in that. That's fab. Mm, the smells coming from the oven are incredible. But it's going to have to be mouth-watering to come close to the golden crispiness of a roast chicken and all the trimmings. Oh, yes, man! Look at this bad boy. Si, you can have first taste. Is it as good as it looks? Oh, oh. No, it's better. Oh, it really is lovely. We've pulled it off. It's delivering. Well, yeah, definitely, on all levels. Taste, flavour, texture, it's moist. But it's not diet food, it's just it's food. great food. We've worked out there are just 519 calories per serving for our masala chicken and spicy roasties. That includes that drizzle of yoghurt, too. Si, I love it, but is it good enough to pass my family's rigorous taste test? Is the skin off the chicken? Yes, though? we kind of make a skin. Mm. A masala crust with yoghurt and spices. It doesn't no. look like you've taken the skin no. out. Mm. It's so juicy. The taste is fantastic. What do you think? It's really good. And also, it's good for you, you know? It's good food. And you don't need to take the skin off a chicken, then mm. cut all the fat bits off. Do you know how many calories are left in a whole chicken? Myers, stop it. I've been putting some thought into what I can do to be more active. And whilst I'm not up for gyms or workouts, rugby used to be quite a big thing for me. When he played rugby, he was big, but he wasn't overweight and he was really, really fit. And I, I think, you know, that's when he was at his happiest with himself, perhaps. Today, it's something I share from the sidelines. 
with my youngest son, Dylan. Come on, Dil! Go on, hand again, Reds! Yes, good lads! Well, rugby's like a game that gives you a lot of confidence in yourself, and, like, I think when my dad played that, really to, like, push him on and, like, to give him the confidence to do such stuff. And he was always, like, very good at just running over people. <laughs> big scrum, Brad! Big scrum! And then, like, he came off the field thinking, God, I've done well, you know? Go on, Dylan, go on. Pump your legs, Dylan, keep pumping. Good lad, go on. My days of getting battered on the pitch are over, but the more I think about how being fit boosted my self-esteem, I want to find a way to get that feeling back. If my dad gets a lot more thinner, I would definitely just like to go on the field and play rugby with him for ages. It's just definitely, I really like it. I think it'd be really fun. If getting into shape to enjoy father and son activities isn't a good motivator, then I don't know what is. But I do need to find an enjoyable way to do it. First, though, Dave and I are going to find out if the calorie cutting is paying off on our waistlines. So we're returning to Newcastle University and Hospital. We're being monitored on this weight loss journey by leading metabolic scientist, Professor Roy Taylor. He knows everything that is to know about the science of fat. Hey, Roy, Hi. Hi. Very nice to see you. How are you? Dr. Roy, nice to see you. You're looking great, the three of you. Well, we're, 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 we're trying, sir. We're yeah. trying. How have you found it? Have you been a bit... Ah, tired? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's just the opposite. Absolutely just the opposite. I've got much more energy. The thing is, as well, there's a bit more passion as well. A bit more passion. Oh. Why do you have to bring that up and cover that? That's true. weird. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a medical thing. This is really very understandable because being overweight, carrying extra weight, actually diminishes potency. And so uh, you're doing exactly the right things for what most guys would like, what most couples would like, because this is a family thing. It's dead encouraging. It's encouraging well, for both of us, mate. Now, right. how about measuring your girth? Your, right. The last time we met Professor Roy, he was concerned we were storing dangerous amounts of blubber in our bellies. It's fat here that's linked to medical nasties like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, so losing inches could gain us years in the long run. So. Let's find out what's going on. The first time Roy measured my waist, it was over 50 inches. Whoa! This time, I'm down to just over 46. That's four, four inches. inches. So, Dave. Last time, my waist was almost 50 inches. Now it's about 46 and a half. So, like Si, I've lost around four inches off my waist. Yes! Whoa! Shane, the light! That is a huge loss. And that's fantastic because it's all this central fat, which is so much of a bad thing. Yeah, we're on the track. Long way to go. I have to say that the loss in the waist is going to be greater at this time than at subsequent weigh-ins because the first depot of fat you start burning is the dangerous stuff really? inside the belly. Yeah. So you'd find you'd have to cut back your food even more to keep up the same rate of weight loss. What can we do to increase our weight loss rate? Could exercise help? Only if it fits in quite well. Playing squash in the morning and then sitting down burns up about half as much calories as going into the garden and pottering around for four hours. Same. And cycling, built into everyday life. You know, that's, that's yeah. really how to, uh, to get the time in. After three weeks of doing this thing, we've lost around eight inches between us. That's good going. I feel great and I can't wait. You know, we're both on track. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Fine. That's it. Yeah. Fantastic. And if yeah. we can do it, then anybody can. You're too right. Here, Dave. Professor Roy suggested cycling. Do you think we could give up our leathers and bikes? Oh, let's think on it, Kingy, as I've had a special delivery at my place and it could be just the thing for bikers like us who like a bit of horsepower between our legs. This device brings home several unique exercise options, firming and strengthening your hips, abs, lumbar and obliques. You'll never have more fun exercising than with this balanced trainer. Right. They're up to four speeds. Now, you're on warm-up now. Right. Stage two is taking it easy. Right. Sit up on the comfortable ergo seat. It's not comfortable. <laughs> Stage three is oh. getting serious. <laughs> Number four is the full gallop speed. Was it really? Now, that's the one you keep now for a further 
further 12 minutes. Oh, what? Oh, oh. Okay, I'm not sure. No. I, I know it might work for some. Fair enough. But I'd rather be on a saddle on a real horse, one I can have a rapport with, not a mechanical donkey. Oh. You know, I can be out there in the field in the sunshine, being at one with nature. There is no, no substitute for sensible daily exercise and good diet. And I think if we think there is, we're just deluding ourselves. You're not wrong. Ready to turn it off? Oh, don't worry about that. It'll turn itself off once it's finished the cycle. Oh, right. I'm not sure about this. Some of our big eaters are having a bit more success than me in upping their activity and they're sharing their ideas. Take Anne Adlington. Anne wants to shed the six stones she piled on since giving up smoking. She's putting more welly into her daily activities from pounding the banks of the fishing lake she runs to putting extra elbow grease into household chores. I'm going to do more housework, more cleaning and try and do a jig while I'm doing it. Do 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 and thinking I'll go back to that one of my happy days when I was skinny. I was eight and a half stone there. Look at the size of me boobs there to them now. No wonder I overbalance now. My god. Working mum Claire Mitchell's in a bid to shed her mummy tummy. I've struggled with my weight um, since I got pregnant, really, so that's kind of getting on for five years ago. A lot of things contribute to it. You know, baking is what I do when, I'm, when I need a break, and then I eat it. <laughs> you know, so the more stress I am, the more I bake and, and the more I eat. And working from home, temptation's always in her way. But now she wants to get as nimble as those manicured fingers of hers. I use this for hanging clothes on. I got it for Christmas and it looked great and I just said it was a nice room decoration but now I'm actually using it, I'm running five and a half K, um, getting really fit and just really enjoying it, it's changed the way that I, I live really, I'm just a lot healthier these days. As a community rugby coach and player herself, Laura Coleman spends most of her time on a pitch, so her problem's not exercise but what she eats afterwards. Right, um... I need a bit of help with post-match teas. As in, I need a healthy option that I can then cook for my team that's still gonna be hugely tasty so that the girls won't necessarily know that we're eating a healthier option. So it means I don't get all the banter for eating healthy. To make sure Laura's not the butt of any rugby jokes, we've invited her to my place to create a rugby supper that delivers health by stealth. And we're going to have to cook up a big dish packed with flavour as Laura wants to make it for her team and a local rival side. We have come up with a plan. Oh, Belter. One of the most fattening things that we've ever cooked has been... The French cassoulet. Oui. Cassoulet is really a posh casserole. In France, the authentic recipe is such an art form, there's an academy dedicated to it. And this was my certificate from the order of the Cassolet. And this is my bed. We are, in fact, masters at concocting basically a melange of beans and duck and pork and fattening good things. I'm sure we can substitute fatty cuts of meat with lean ones, but a sausage cassoulet is nothing without a sausage. Just go for a sausage that says 85% meat and beyond. So I'm just going to fry these off. A brush of oil to help our bangers colour up nicely. Let's get our Laura to work on the healthy veg to bulk out the dish. If I can get French peasants through the winter, I can feed you guys after a game of rugby. Oh, that wonderful smell of fried onions. We don't want them quite burger van, but I think we should have a little bit of colour in this. Absolutely. The natural sugars that's coming out of the onion are starting to caramelise, and that's, that's another layer of flavour. And Dave has a great way of getting maximum flavour from garlic. Why are you grating it? It just gives you the most wonderful garlic paste. It's lush, cos that goes right the way through yeah. the dish. But already it's smelling absolutely super appetising, isn't it? Absolutely immense. The authentic cassoulet contains goose fat rendered duck confit. Instead, we're using skinless chicken thighs. That's it, yeah. Grand. 
Once the chicken's seared, it's into our casserole dish along with our veg. Put the carrots and the celery in there. And instead of the wobbly pork belly in the traditional cassoulet, how about using lean hunks of gammon? I can you fling the gammon in? We don't want to waste one molecule of the flavours we've built up, so I'm deglazing the pan with a smidge of wine. It's my favourite old pans, this. I call it my cowboy pan. That all goes in there. Oh, yes. We can remain loyal to the original recipe with our final ingredient, cannellini beans. Oh, yeah. Whoa, nice. The longer and slower it cooks, the more intense the flavours will become. Come on, Slim, unleash the beast. Get that. Smell that, man. It's marvellous. It is, isn't it? Great. Oh, hey. Does it feel like a heavy thing of food? It does. Ooh. Ooh, yes. And as a final fat-free flavour fix, a garnish of parsley and orange zest. It smells as the orange zest. Heats up. Mm. Ladies first. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. brilliant. That orange at the end gives it a really good little hint. Mm. Mm. That is a multi layered, multi flavoured plate of food. Fabulous. Oh, yes. <laughs> Having a sausage gasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laura seems pretty pleased. And we've worked out our cassoulet is around 460 calories per serving, which means that together with our cooked breakfast and spicy roast lunch, we're well under our 1,300 calorie target for three great family meals. But after three weeks of this new food order, is it paying off on the scales? Prunes. We had convert 6.9 kilos. Convert. One stone, one and a half pound. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd lost that thing. That's really good. Oh, well, that's good, guys. Well, listen, thanks very much for all your help, cos um, I couldn't do it without you. And there's not one bacon sandwich being consumed in front of me. No. And for that, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you, doll. Well done. Mm, here we'll go. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? That's good. Yeah, fantastic. Right. I'm going to put my clothes on now, do you think? Yeah, Probably best. Better. I've got stuff to do, haven't I? Right. Oh. Mind, yeah. <laughs> That's a result and means I'm right on target to shift two and a half stone in just over three months. For me, a big motivation is that shifting inches will save me pounds sterling in the long run. You see, I have a £500 bet with stepdaughter Isa, I'll get into 20-year-old jeans. Are you feeling confident? Yes. A little does she know that Professor Roy's already confirmed that I'm on course to achieve it. That's four inches off my waist. Ha-ha! <laughs> I'll still win the bet. No chance. You're not getting that money. Yeah, I am. You're not. Loser. I've got two more months to lose the remaining five inches, and I've got news for you, Isa. I'm determined to do it. We just need to keep creating dishes that are miniature on calories, yet massive on taste. At Novo's Rugby Club near Newcastle, Big Eater and rugby player Laura Coleman is preparing one such dish, our cunning cassoulet from earlier, to feed her teammates and a rival side. We want to make sure our cunning cassoulet is a real crowd pleaser, so we've enlisted the help of the Big Eater's resident chef, Andrew Brown. Pour the red wine in and stir it round to get all these bits off. Yeah. You see, the cassoulet won't be the only dish served at this rugby supper. At rival rugby club Westo in South Shields, veteran members and big eaters Ken Ray and Dave Arundel are cooking up the stereotypical rugby player's favourite. Right, when well, I'm creating curry, this one is uh, a curlin chicken kerma. Even though Ken and Dave are trying to lose weight, their curry is going to be a full-fat offering to appeal to the local sides. How many curry houses have we got in one street? 19 curry houses in one street. And that's what kids are brought up on? Yeah. That and Savaloy's. We on the curry at an early age. Right, well, we've got enormous breasts, which are very popular in South Shields. Look at those, wonderful, wonderful to behold. You won't find many rugby players who don't really enjoy um, 
curry. That's for certain. Right, so now's the scientific part. No ready-made sauces here. Ken and Dave are purists and are making it from scratch. But it's the clarified butter or ghee and full-fat yoghurt that really adds the calories to curry. Oh, just look at the gloss on that. You only get that from fat. Nice big chunky pieces for big chunky rugby players. Ken and Dave's curry will be served with rice poppadoms and all the trimmings and contains a hefty 857 calories. Our castle is half of that. Most rugby players historically would go with a curry. I mean, it's just, if you say cassoulet to a rugby player, they won't have a clue what it is. So, he'll be getting over that barrier. As Laura's found, it's tempting to reward yourself with piles of fatty food after exercise, but she's hoping the cassoulet is hearty enough to hit the spot with her teammates. And they've hit the showers, but is that a celebration or a commiseration? I don't know, mate. I've not been this near the girls' changing room since I was at school, and I don't think we should hang around to find out. Let's just check in with our star player, Laura. Oh, it's a hive of activity in here. Look at that. It's like some mad witch. Wow. <laughs> That's smelling good, though. Yeah, it's real food. Oh, look, those sausages are brown nicely. You see, you've done a stove top as opposed to an oven, and actually, I think that might be better. So do I. Because it's reduced more, it's thicker and be more tasty. Yeah. How are you doing? All right, Chef. <laughs> Another pair of us. Look it. We both thought we'd get in the mood. Scrum down. The countdown to kick off has begun, as the rival side, in the form of Dave and Ken, are on their way with this precious cockle. I'm just worried about severe breaking. I could end up with curry in my lap when it's very, very hot. It's like having a very hot sleepy grandchild on your knee where you can't move. Interesting experience, this. It'll also be interesting to see whether it's the full-fat curry or our calorie-conscious cassoulet that proves most popular with the players based purely on taste. Hello. Ah. Good lads have arrived. Hello, mate. Oh, How are you? Oh, you good. Oh, look at this. Talking of curry. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> I hope you've done a dreadful job. You're not competitive, are you? Yes. Uh, so are we. <laughs> yeah, but we're all yeah, on the same team see. now. Yes. It's taking years off my life getting in here. Oh, oh yeah. Chicken. Oh, it smells lovely. Uh, a proper South Shields curry, so it's the full bifter. Right. With the rice, papadoms, rata. The lads from Westall Rugby Club oh, have hell. been brought up on curry. Yeah. And they've never heard of cassoulet. I think they'll just go straight for the curry. Oh, well. Well, we'll soon find out if they go for the cassoulet, because the West Door lads are on their way. Garrett, 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 Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> With both sides about to arrive, has Laura got a case of the pre-match jitters? It's all right. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not going to admit defeat yet. Oh, we're slightly concerned. That curry looks a belter. Does anybody want a pint? Our two teams of rugby players turned blind taste test judges have arrived. Amateur rugby players burn about 600 calories per hour. They'd have to play solidly for an hour and a half to burn off Ken and Dave's full-fat curry. But they'd only need to play for 45 minutes to burn off our cunning cassoulet. I'm happy that we're going to win. Very happy that we're going to win. No, no, we're, we're all your win team. You've got home advantage. I don't like all that green stuff on the top. None of the players know we're here, and they also have no idea there's a significant calorie difference between the two dishes. We just hope they'll give our cassoulet a try. There's two dishes up here, cassoulet, and you've got a chicken curry. To explain what cassoulet is, a cassoulet is a posh casserole. <laughs> At the start of this blind taste test, it's Ken and Dave's colourful curry that seems to be the most popular. I can see the curry's going down well because you can see the rice on the plate, the yellow rice. Hold on. They're having a bit of curry and cassoulet. 
bloody oven, no? Oh, yeah. It's like a bloody soup kitchen. You know, Dave, they could have a portion of our cassoulet and a pint and a half of beer for the same calories as that fatty curry. But the players are going up for seconds of both dishes. These people have no sense of portion control. Let's get out there and share the score calorie-wise with the players. How's it going? How's it going? Oh, oh. oh. Look at this, lad. This is not portion control, is there? <laughs> oh, but... oh, that was... yes. Look what's happened there. Oh, no, fair enough, though. He was sure as a good lad. <laughs> Didn't stand too close to him, dude. He's full of tossed testicles. <laughs> so, we've got the curry, and then we've got Laura's cassoulet. Do you think um, she's done all right? Yeah, yeah Cassidy's good. Tasty. Hits all the, all, the, all the things that you want for something to eat, didn't you? Yeah. Right? Good, 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 good. The cassoulet is around 450 calories for a big plate full. Dave, if we're going to be precise, it's 464 calories a portion. The curry's great, but it's twice as fattening. Yep. It's about making the calories that you consume count, basically. Yeah. That's what it is. Because there's loads of hidden calories that didn't count and you don't feel fed. And you need to... He's a... No, 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 no. He's, he's a bloody machine, isn't he? <laughs> Will you have a job? Well done, kid. It's good. Yeah, well done. Well, I bet this is a sausage desert in here. It is as well. <laughs> I prefer the cas cassoulet, was it called? Cassoulet. The cassoulet to the curry. Yeah, it was a little bit more difficult to pronounce, but I preferred it. Cassoulet, sir. Cassoulet. Enjoyed the cassoulet quite a bit. Had a bit of a mix. Uh, had a bit of sausage, a bit of chicken. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Good choice. After a rugby game, I think it'd be great, as opposed to the uh, traditional pie and peas. Some of the players are even having third helpings to take away. Have it for lunch tomorrow. Healthy lunch. It was about the same amount of uh, curry to cassoulet, and the cassoulet is nearly gone, and the curry's there's a lot yeah. of curry still left, which is interesting. It is tasty. It is, it's lovely. It's a good recipe. So our cassoulet proved more than an even match for the curry, but the most important player to please is big eater Laura. I think we managed to prove our point, the fact that you can still eat a proper, decent meal is actually a lot healthier for you. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. So that success marks the end of the first month of this new way of cooking and eating for Dave and I. Our big eating buddies started the diet a couple of weeks later than us, and it's time to get a measure of ourselves. Rugby lass Laura Coleman's first to weigh in at the Granger Market. Um, I was 13.7. Let's hopefully I've lost a little bit of weight. Ooh, yes! 13.5. Two pounds. So that's two pounds off in around two weeks for Laura, and she's had to dash off for rugby training. But what about the rest of the big eaters? Right, now, let's have an orderly line. Yeah. So, first on the hockey, it's our Ken. Right. Ken, what did you weigh at the start of this diet? I was 18 stone three. 18 stone three. Yes, 1710! Get in! Half a stone. Yeah. All that clever cooking appears to have paid off for Ken. Next up, it's Anne. What did you weigh? 1910. 198, you Nin lost two pounds. Hey, that's good. Well done, John. That's good. Now, Claire, what did you weigh at the start of this, Claire? 12 stone four. Mm. Oh, but wait 12 on. stone seven. Oh, it's not that much, though. No, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Next up, our black belt, Jonathan. 16, five and three quarters. Um, 16, seven. No, see, no. Oh, right. Jonathan. I'm oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> It's in the most setbacks. But you're still a fat black belt. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, what did you wear at the start of this? 19 stone. 19 stone. Yes. 19 stone six! <laughs> well, you put six pounds yes. on your tiny. I'll tell you what, mate, we're not bloody Rosemary Connolly, are we? No, <laughs> it's, it's not. not this is not stop, the... It's not going well. Tell you what, if you don't sort it out, you're going to boot camp. <laughs> Let's hope our hard-partying student, Liz, does a bit better. Yeah. Now, do you think you've lost any? No. Why? Because I've drunk too much. Ah. ah. 
Thirteen four. You haven't. Stay the same. Same. Yes. Yay. And finally on the scales, it's Dave. Let's hope he's lost something. What were you to start with, me old mother? Fourteen stone dead. Right. Okay. Crack on. Yes, 14, yeah, yeah. 13, 12. Yeah. Yeah. That's mint. Right. Oh, thank goodness for Dave, because that was a very mixed bag of results for the rest of the big eaters. On, Don't forget, we've been calorie cutting for a bit longer, Cy. Si. Let's find out if this past month has paid off on the scales. When we first came into the warehouse a month ago, I weighed 17 stone 11 and a half. That's one stone one four pounds. When I was last here, I was 19 stone and five pounds. Get him! 18 five! What's that mean? Stone one, yeah. 19 five, so one What's stone one pound. Yeah, brilliant, get him! Yeah. Better than that! Yeah. Well, that's a good result for both of us. Hopefully, the Big Eaters' first group weigh-in will give them the boost they need to do better next time. And it also gives us plenty of motivation to come up with more recipes to help all of us lose weight. Well done, mate. And you, bud. Well, and we, you. We've done nearly two and a half stone between us. That's a lot. That's without a fatty diet. Yes. That's without fasting. Yes. So there have been sacrifices. We've knocked the drink off, largely. Oh, Psychologically, yeah. it's kind of hard. It's hard. Yeah. At the minute... <laughs> I have a mindset flushed with uh, flushed with the success of the first initial weight loss. It took me quite a long time to kind of get over my scale phobia. And it's been worth it. Oh, it definitely has been worth it. Yeah, yeah. I feel so positive about that result, I'm ready to take Professor Roy's advice. Maybe it's time the hairy bikers have a go at being the hairy cyclists. The hairy cyclists, uh, well... <laughs> Be interested to see him in his uh, lighter spandex. Oh, Kingy, spandex? Oh God. <laughs> Come on, Right. Si, it's a good idea to start off-road before we inflict ourselves on the motoring public. I thought I'd forgotten how to ride a bike, you know, but it turns out that riding a bike is like riding a bike. It's not bad, this, you know. Here, yeah, Kingy, you have to agree. We've created three hearty meals. I do, mate, and less than 1,300 calories between them. If we carry on like this for three months, we'll be body beautiful bikers, you know. But there's plenty more meal times to crack. I'm sure this bit's up hill. I think it is, you know. Well, Next time, can we roll out pastry treats without piling on the lard? Can you eat a pie? That's a pie, dude. A new take on the tempting takeaway meals that led us astray. Sit, mate, we don't have to give up with the Indian night on Tuesdays. But will our dieting delivery service receive rave reviews? I would order that. Just tastes so... Fresh and real. And the hairy cyclists take to the hills. There's no stopping us now. I can't work out which is a front and back rear. <laughs> <laughs>